India's commodity derivative market has seen a series of changes. Volumes dropped in agriculture after SEBI suspended trading of seven agri commodities, including wheat, paddy, chana, mustard, moong, among others, till December 2023, with the aim to control inflation. Previously, SEBI had banned trading these commodities till last December 2022. Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta and to discuss the outlook for 2023 for the commodity derivative market, I am now joined by Mr. Arun Raste. He's Managing Director and CEO at National Commodities and Derivatives Exchange. Mr. Raste, hi, thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. It has been a challenging year 2022 for you, whether it was about government controls, contract suspensions, bans, etc. What is it that you're taking as in sense of learning from the year gone by? Oh, good afternoon, Manisha. It's good to be here in 2023. 2022 was challenging, but uh, every challenge, uh, you know, teaches you something. So for us, the learning was, uh, one, you need to go beyond the conventional agri basket that we were specializing in. Mm. We need to get into commodities which are not so sensitive as far as the housewife's budget is concerned. And we need to grow the market uh, both depth as well as uh, wider reach. So that was a learning for us. And with that learning, we are getting into 2023, uh, scouting for new products, which will be interesting for markets as well as market participants, and which will impact a lot of uh, the stakeholders positively. So that is our learning from 2022. Yeah, and we are very positive that uh, we'll be doing well in 23. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rasev, uh, you know, the last year, while it had its challenges, we also saw FPOs in number continue to increase. Uh, you've launched newer commodities, whether it was steel or coffee for that matter. And then the markets are looking at options and index trading as well, not just futures. How has that uh, number worked out for you? Well, uh, coffee, the contract actually, though we launched it in September, it is effective date is February onwards. So mm -hmm. we don't know how it will shape up. But since coffee is the second largest commodity uh, consumed globally every morning, we are very sure that uh, we will do well. And our coffee uh, you know, contract will be mirroring uh, the aspiration of the young India. As far as steel is concerned, it is the largest commodity, uh, industrial commodity. And uh, twice uh, it was launched earlier in different phases. It didn't work. But hopefully, uh, this time it will work because we have seen so far the traction is good. So hopefully, steel should do well for us in this year. Mr. Raste, you know, I was talking to you earlier and you mentioned that there are nearly 91 commodities that have been approved for trading into the derivative market and our number, the final number that we see currently is quite small. How many commodities are we trading right now and do you have plans to introduce more commodities into 2023? So uh, that was one learning from 2022. We looked, what we did was we looked at uh, our own exchange and what were the products which we had launched earlier and we had to withdraw. And then we also looked at some of the other exchanges which closed down and the kind of products which they had. So we scanned and we realized that there are commodities like ESAP Gold, which are very specialized in say, uh, you know, Ayurveda and uh, medicines. It was doing well and uh, somehow it was, uh, you know, withdrawn by that particular exchange because that exchange closed down. So we looked at ESAP goal and uh, we are launching that in this particular year. There's one growth area which everybody is talking about uh, right from UN Secretary General and our Prime Minister, uh, that is carbon credits. And hopefully, uh, you know, India will be a carbon credits positive country. And we see a lot of scope in carbon credits. And that is one of those 91 commodities where futures could be launched. So we are looking at that. We have already, you know, formed a project, you know, product advisory committee for carbon credits. And hopefully by this year end, we should be through with our work and submit our proposal to the regulator for launching carbon credits. Uh, having said that, uh, last year, as we started this deal, we are looking at non-agree space. Uh, so we'll be looking at a couple of other, uh, you know, metals and uh, definitely will be giving you some news going forward. All right, I will wait for that. Mr. Rajde, also, you know, this is about instruments and commodities uh, that can be introduced. And this has been a positive, really. As you said, the optimism clearly is brimming when I talk to you here. But what about the participation? Because uh, institutional participation still is missing. Would you say that the change in contract specifications is yet another thing to look for? So institutional participation is, uh, you know, missing on two counts. Uh, some of those, like, say, FPI is not allowed in agree at all. So unless that ha happens, uh, they will not come in. So it has to be a regulatory measure for that. As far as other, uh, you know, domestic institutional participation is concerned, there are two or three different kinds of uh, people. It is either the alternate investment funds or mutual funds. One or two have started, but mm -hmm. the number is still to grow. 
the reason why it is not growing is uh, commodities is still seen as a very very specialized and niche market and not many people understand and there is a fear that uh, if you know something goes wrong what will i do with the underlying so therefore we will need to look at products where the financial sector players will not have to worry about the underlying commodities and they can still deal with it so that is something which will going forward which will be our focus area all right and you know what uh, mr ras the, the, the exchange heads now no, can't just be exchange heads you have to be an academician you have to be a, a person who's uh, sensitive to political movements also uh, global movements and 22 22 clearly has taught us that as well so whether it was about covid lockdown and the increased consumption that we saw after that or the uh, supply shock that we saw coming after russia ukraine etc how have you been able to manage that and what are the learnings from there which you are implementing now in this year So there are two or three learnings. Uh, you know, under our IPFT program, we were so far concentrating only on you know a small set of investors. But then we realized that you know uh, there is a huge set of investors which suddenly came into the market in last two years, especially in equity markets, thanks to Zerudas and uh, you know stocks of the world. Now they haven't come into commodities market because, as I said, the commodity market is considered as something which is a little tricky, which is a little difficult market. And then we realize this need, and therefore what we have targeted is this time we are getting into universities and colleges, and there, right from the undergrad to graduation level, we are looking at teaching people on commodity derivatives. So once we invest into people who are in their 18 and 20s, they'll be invested into commodities for next 40, 50, 60 years till the time they are earning. Oh. That is something which is a big learning for us. All right. Just to wind out this conversation, I have a final question, and this is about while clearly, I mean, as you said, talked about uh, commodities and uh, uh, you know the inflation concerns and the uh, every measure, whether it's about import duty, tax duty, stock limit, etc., does impact commodities in some sense. How are you working with the government? And sensitizing them, ensuring that they also, in some sense, come on the platform, make use of this. Again, twenty-two taught us uh, something very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are three kinds of, uh, you know, training programs which uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy conducts. One is for, you know, freshers, those who join IAS. One is uh, mid-career, and one is senior. And fortunately for us, uh, they have given us opportunity to, you know, come and speak to the IAS officers. We have started with that. Then we have started with uh, NABARD and SBI, the bankers. So we are reaching out to people who matter in this uh, particular field, whether it is bankers or whether it is administrators. uh we haven't gone into yet into political class but hmm. hopefully going forward we'll do that as <laughs> all right so there's a big list of what needs to be done in 2023 and uh, mr raste clearly put out that list for us thank you so much for joining us and uh, we have a lot to look forward to when it comes to agri commodities to ncdx itself when it comes to launching more commodities going forward there with that we'll go for a short break but don't go anywhere because when we come back we have a discussion with ashok gautam managing director and chief executive officer at india international bullion exchange coming out after this break Welcome back to Commodity Champions and India launched its first international bullion market in July last year conceptualized to provide a gateway to import bullions into the country IBX will allow resident qualified jewelers to import bullion directly IBX has 75 qualified jewelers and 11 trade income clearing members on its exchange currently India's gold market is one of the largest in the world and the third quarter of FY23 was the best for gold since June 2020 Comex gold prices began this year as well near a 6 month highs and the MCX gold is trading at a 30 month highs so how will the Indian International Bullion Exchange boost India's role in global markets to discuss exactly that i am now joined by Mr Ashok Gautam who's MD and CEO at IBX Mr Gautam hi thank you so much for coming by uh, you know two quarters young and the PM himself inaugurated IBX how is the pressure or how's the josh after these two quarters Uh, before I start, let me wish a very happy New Year to you, you. and the audience. Uh, I think the Josh is always very high, and uh, 29 July is a day which we can never forget. When uh, Prime Minister of the country came to gift IFSC to launch IBX, and uh, I think uh, he also set out a roadmap for us, and uh, that India at some point has to emerge. Not some point, quickly mm. has to emerge as a mm. price. influencer and price setter going forward in various commodities and gold obviously that was a uh, exchange which was being launched and uh, uh, we are now working to uh, meet that uh, high aspiration which has been set for all of us uh, 
And I'm so thankful that uh, we have a regulator in IFSCA, which is so progressive. Uh, we have a phenomenal uh, governing board. And not only that, we have seen some very top ranking uh, uh, government uh, cabinet ministers, as well as the various secretaries uh, visit to uh, IFSCA as well as to IBX. And that only tells that there is a huge confidence uh, in IBX uh, by the government and various authorities. Mm. And now the onus is on us mm. and also onus is also on the market because this exchange essentially has been created for the market. Industry, yes. And it has two parts. Mm. One is the international market and second is the domestic market. Uh, with your permission, if I can just talk about the domestic market first and what all we have done. Mm. and uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Manisha ji, uh, as you know, Q2 is when we got launched and mm. Q3 is something which we saw. So, between Q2 to Q3 itself, we have seen uh, uh, gold import in India through IBX uh, almost uh, 2.78 times jump, okay. which is 178%. Uh, numbers are small. Uh, mm. I'm not uh, saying that they are any big. Mm. But this only tells the mm. direction. And if this direction continues, I think we have a winner at hand. Uh, what I'm also going to say that during this time, uh, we have not only said that we have launched a T plus zero contract, we have also listened to the market, that what market is saying. As you know, today we have uh, vaults in gift IFSC, we have three vaults there. Uh, so the market has been saying, uh, uh, how can you give us the gold soon at our doorstep? Mm. Uh, because today they are very uh, used to of taking gold by paying rupee and within the same day mm, they get the mm, gold. Mm. Uh, so we have taken various steps to it. And uh, if uh, through your channel I want to tell everyone, second important date for IBX in this small uh, journey which we have is the 11th October. Mm. When we demonstrated to the global uh, uh, exchange market and we conveyed this in our uh, Dubai conference and the LBMA where we attended, mm. that that day... Uh, the gold came, the dollars came, the trade happened, and 77 uh, kilogram gold got shipped out of gift IFSC vaults mm. in, within one day. Mm. Now we want to compress this cycle and we also want to ensure that this gold gets delivered across India. Uh, Government of India has already permitted that in SEZs, uh, we can have IFSCA approved vaults okay. on which the work is already on. This mm. will take some time, three to six months, but mm. The direction is very clear and we are very uh, well working with the regulator, authorities and the vault operators. Okay. And uh, second thing is uh, very, I'm very excited to share with everyone what we are working on. Hmm. Uh, T plus zero and when I say that I want to move from T plus zero to T plus 30, hmm. everybody gets shocked what is what I'm talking about. Hmm. You know, what I'm talking about is uh, that we want to settle the T plus zero trades within 30 minutes of the trade happening. And this will be a every 30 minute cycle. We have already tested it. Okay. Uh, we are in discussion with our depository. Okay. And once we are ready, uh, we will go back to the regulator, mm. uh, bring uh, our case to them. Mm. And I'm sure they will also approve it. Very aspirational, I would say, from one day to 30 minutes. I mean, you clearly are making records there. But I also want to talk about a recent circular that came, and that was about hedging gold as well into IFSC via IBX. What does that mean? How are you working on that? Uh, Manisha ji, this is something which is a game changer. Mm. Uh, as you know, long time back, uh, the uh, entities in India were allowed to hedge outside. Then it was decided only on the exchanges right. in India, in INR, mm. the gold price can be hedged. Uh, hedged. Mm. Now, Reserve Bank of India has permitted that all resident entities, except individuals, mm. who have uh, exposure to the gold price risk, they can do the hedge at the IFSC exchanges. Uh, that is, so with this Reserve Bank of India circular already coming in and uh, we are already in discussion with our regulator, we have been directed and we are having our board meeting soon where we'll be, uh, you know, taking the contours of the product which is the gold futures and uh, maybe uh, next time when I speak to you, we would have already told you that okay. yes, our gold futures product is ready and uh, we can offer the hedging mechanism in terms of dollar mm. uh, for gold price risk through IABX. And this is something which is very amazing. So step by step, you see how it has happened. Qualified jewelers enabled by DGFT, IFSCA issued various circulars, IABX came into being, 
and then uh, second step reserve bank of india permitted dollar flow uh, advance dollar can be sent to yeah. uh, trade on ibx direct then, reports <laughs> then indian banks they were permitted to become professional clearing members on ibx and now we have this so there is a direction in which we all are working and i am mm. sure that ibx which is for indian bullion market uh will certainly meet its expectations all right let's talk about the future here as well and as the new year opens i'm sure you have a long list here as well as you were telling us earlier whether it's about metal loans or export uh, uh, markets as well and then of course the scz to scz transfer that you talked about the work is already in progress uh thanks manisha for uh, bringing that up so we are working on uh, two very distinct pieces one mm -hmm. is because in the t plus 0 itself so this is trying to uh, replicate or replicate or replace the consignment model which is already there so uh, we discussed uh, with the regulator and everybody and including the ministry uh, uh, ministry of commerce that uh, we would also like to provide gold to the exporters of jewelry through ibx mm -hmm. so the scz to scz transfer is a easy thing to do so qualified jewelers who are in scz can take the gold through us and so obviously for that sop is the working mm -hmm. uh, sop work is on that right. will happen okay. second is uh, those who are having advance authorization for which we have already represented to our regulator and they are talking to the relevant authorities okay. and later uh, something which i want to tell and i am very excited to share <laughs> this information that ice gate work is on mm. so gift scz will get integrated with the ice gate now once ice gate gets implemented then the qualified jewelers who are in dta area they want to take uh, gold uh, uh, duty free gold uh, by paying bank or uh, bank guarantee or bond or whatever mm. custom stipulate they will be able to do take it through ibx mm. market opens up for them and a transparent market on which we believe they will get a very good pricing through our exchange it becomes available for exporters and we'll be we will become a great philip to push the export of gold jewelry from india so while lots is being done i'm assuming there's a bit of a heartache somewhere because when you look at the gold prices in india they were trading at a discount did you uh, heading ibx feel that pinch absolutely manisha ji uh, if you see the domestic player uh, initially uh, so we have a international piece which we have not yet discussed okay. uh, so the domestic piece which we are talking about uh, that gets influenced by what the price we are there able to get in india right and if the prices which we have seen we have seen even the discount up to 28 dollars plus yes. to the international market i mean nobody will actually come in this scenario to ibx to take the gold but despite that some people have come to test their processes they have taken a bit of gold here and there and i believe today also some transaction is happening because mm -hmm. the qualified jewelers are excited they are looking to connect and they are also testing by doing some test trades their back office their mid office and their mm -hmm. old systems mm -hmm. uh, but just to obviate this problem you know if the market remains in discount for foreseeable future that's where we are now talking about the gold to be made available to the exporters of jewelry mm. which is uh, not dependent on what price is it prevalent in india yeah, right. largely hmm. and second is also on the gold metal loan and the gold lease products right. for which uh, uh, regulator soon will be coming up uh, i don't want to preempt it <laughs> we'll wait for it once that comes we'll tell you about our readiness and uh, to me that would be another step which big market leap. we don't have yeah, any yeah. steps here yeah, it's going <laughs> to be big jumps leap. here uh, but you know manisha ji i just want to say uh, it's a very hard work a really? very consistent work and everybody is working together to make this a success hmm. and i want through your channel to tell the whole audience that uh, this exchange is for you and uh, it's because you wanted this that's why this is there yes, and, and i uh, would like you all to you know start reeking be uh, taking the benefits of ibx <laughs> so uh, right now it's only gold but uh, in your conversations in our earlier conversations you also mentioned that silver would be the next one here because silver imports into india this year rather 2022 have been at record highs how would that work for you is the work already in progress for that So Manisha ji we have already uh, represented to the regulator because okay. when the DGFT uh, uh, notification came it came for the gold only for qualified jewelers mm. we have already represented and uh, you talked about one year i am saying one quarter <laughs> so maybe in this quarter we might get some good news on the silver side also uh, once that happens uh, then so we will have gold we'll have silver and uh, maybe i don't know how much time you have we'd also want to talk what we are going to do for the international piece uh, I, i think we have a couple of minutes please uh, quickly i tell you huh. so we also want this ibx to be the uh, destination for the gold capital of the world hmm. 
So uh, we have the bullion deposit receipt, right. gold or silver. So mm. the investors who want to invest in physical gold and silver, IBX provides an opportunity in the digital form, which okay. is the BDR. Mm. And tomorrow, you know, we can work out with the various partners where this digital BDR can also be tokenized for a smaller lot to be offered to the NRIs and PIOs. All these are, you know, limitless thoughts, opportunities. Limitless opportunities, and, and this is an amazing platform which has been created with the blessings of the government, uh, with our regulator taking all the frontline steps, and we are just trying to, you know, do our best to meet up to the expectations of everyone. And we are just two quarters young, and there is so much that has been done, and so much that can be done. Thank you so much, Mr. Gautam, for coming by and giving us a very detailed sense on what to expect from IIBX going forward. But with that, it's all the time that we have on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.